to a new installment of the Advice Annex with me, JP Metz. How do you guys like this new setup? I mean, I figured, heck, it shouldn't be that hard to go ahead and make this a video too. Just gotta do a few pain in the neck things, but I think this should work. I hope this works. I mean, it should work. And I hope you guys like it. I mean, I guess that's the most important thing. So, yeah, I got another great show today. You guys had some really great questions for me. And as always, if you guys need advice for a future podcast, please call me. The number is 732-529-5772. And don't worry, there's instructions when you call. Like, you don't have to anxiety cat about the whole thing. It's, it's pretty easy. Just try to keep it short. Or if you don't want to do that, you can also email me. The email is theadviceannex at gmail.com. So I got a bunch of calls and emails to answer today, which I'm very excited about. And this is going to be a bit of a challenge because <laughs> I don't know, it's a, like you think it'd be easy, but there's a couple technical things to consider when you're switching things up like this. Like the whole jingle thing was a bit of a thing and the whole getting the calls to be audible that's a challenge and um but i like this I, I think a bunch more of you guys maybe might find the advice annex this way and i really do honestly just want to help you guys out very seriously because you know i know because i'm on facebook and i'm on tumblr you guys are struggling with a whole bunch of crazy things and it's helpful to get uh, you know like a third party perspective even if that third party is maybe not qualified. Well, see, you guys know I'm not a counselor. I'm not a doctor. So I hope that you realize that when you're listening to my advice, you know, there's a lot of times where I think that you would benefit from talking to a counselor or a therapist or maybe someone with some kind of certificate on the wall. And in that case, I'll let you guys know. But I think a lot of times people just need somebody to talk to, somebody to listen to. And that's what I'm here for. Maybe you can think of me as like a big sister. Mm -hmm. Except unlike a big sister, I'm not going to push you and ask you for $10 after I give you advice. I'm just here to give you guys my free two cents. How's that sound? So, I mean, this is going along pretty smoothly so far. Why don't we get right into the first call? Hi, my name is Rebecca. I'm 17. I just moved to Amelia, Ohio from Lebanon, Ohio. <clears throat> One of my boyfriend's closest friends is a girl that I really don't like. And back when I lived in Lebanon, I was a new kid and I tried being nice to everyone. But this girl in particular turned around, she spread nasty rumors about me, saying that I was bullying her and that I was judgmental and mean. And since I was new to the area, nobody would believe my side of the story. So everything she said was used against me and I basically had no friends. Um, I was already going through some stuff at the time, but she kind of pushed me over the edge and I was kind of depressed for a while because nobody liked me. And when I started dating my boyfriend, I found out that this girl was like one of his closest friends. I was mad. I confronted him. I told him what she did to me and how I felt about her. And all he says is, oh, well, she's my closest friend. Am I supposed to just believe you over her? You know, and he uses my bad memory against me saying that, you know, maybe I did bully her and just don't remember doing it. What do I do? Do I do I just forgive her and let them hang out? Or I don't know. I really don't know what to do with the situation because she really makes me mad. But I know that he's really good friends with her and she makes him happy or whatever. So I don't know what to do. Thank you. You know, I, I have a concern here. And that, well, first of all, I hope you realize that you know, just because people are saying these things about you doesn't doesn't mean that they're true. It doesn't need to bother you because you know it's not true. You know you're not a bad person. You know, all, like all these things that you're accu that they're accusing you of are not, in fact, actually happening. So I, I just I would really hate to see this get you down too much because if you're a good person, if you're a good friend, if you treat everyone you meet with respect and you're, you know, overall a, a pleasant person to, to be around and people want to be around you because you're genuine and you don't talk bad about anybody and you don't judge anybody and, and you're cool with everybody, then that's how people are going to know you. And if, and if somebody wants to make something up about you, then that's, 
you know, that's on them. Like, okay, go, you know, whatever you want to do. Like, you can, you can call me the Santa Claus if you want. It doesn't matter because I know I'm not Santa Claus. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times the best way to approach something is just simply honestly. You, you know, you know none of those things are true. So all those people that are saying that stuff about you are not good company. They're not good, good people to have around because they're obviously not in your corner and they're making stuff up. So, and you know, the same thing with your boyfriend regarding your boyfriend. I don't know how I feel about this guy. You know, ob obviously I only have like a small slice of this pie that you're going through right now. But I, I don't understand why he doesn't have your back. Like, isn't that kind of the point of boyfriends? No, I don't know. I mean, but, but, but isn't the point of them that they're supposed to like support you and they support you because they like you and I don't know, they're just there for you. So I don't know why he's not supporting you here. I really don't. It just, it just makes me, you know what it makes me think? It makes me think that I know you're brand new, like you're new to the school and I don't want your first impressions of this place to be your only impressions of this place. And I hope that you can kind of come at this at a renewed sense of, you know what, I'm just going to be myself. I'm just going to be nice to everybody. I'm not going to get caught up in drama. If somebody's doing some dramatic baloney, I refuse to engage in that. I want nothing to do with it because that's not the kind of thing that I would do. No, no. I'm a good person that only has generally good things to say and I don't get wrapped up in this crap. So I would like for you to not get wrapped up in this crap. I want you to feel like you're, if this is all lies, I want you to feel like you're above it. Do you hear, do you hear what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want you to feel like this needs to affect you that much because you know it's not true. I mean, if someone accuses me of hijacking an airplane, I'm not going to get upset about it because I know I didn't hijack an airplane. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, I would really hate to see you um, get too upset about this and think that this school is totally crap and you're never going to have a good time and you're never going to make friends because you, you've barely even had a chance to show them who you really are. And I would love for you to show these people that who you are does not entertain this because you, you, you don't, you don't get involved in that crap. It, so I hope that this is helpful and I would love for you to find a different boyfriend. <laughs> that one, that's not very nice of him at all. He should really have your back on this one, especially if these are all complete lies. So I certainly wish you luck and I hope that you can find some new friends, okay? Hi, JC Mets. My name is Elizabeth. I'm 16 and I live in Orlando, Florida. My problem, I guess, is that um, I'm in this phase now where I'm going into my junior year of school and I'm looking into colleges. And I kind of have an urge to maybe go away. I mean, I like out of state for college. My mom isn't too happy about that, though, and it sparked some debates and some arguments and stuff along those lines. And sometimes when I mention, like, um, going out of state for school or something like that, she says that um, it's not conducive to her and my dad to have to take off from work and stuff. And sometimes I'm like, but am I going to college for you? to be able to see me or for me to get a better education like is it selfish that there are great schools in Florida but is it selfish for me to want to go away or and not really think about how they're always going to visit me and stuff like that or is she right please help me if you be next thank you so much love your show bye okay I, I don't think that that it's selfish I, I certainly don't think it's selfish if you're being called to some place that's far away if you know I mean you have a choice of, of what school you're going to be putting all this money into <laughs> you know I mean you, you might as well go someplace that you would really 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 like to go but one thing kind of struck me about your call in the very beginning you said that you were feeling an urge to go far away to school but I do want you to 
make sure that you have in mind what is it that that is giving you this urge? Why is it that you want to go all the way to Florida to go to school? Is it because that you're, I mean, do they have a great program and what you want to study? Is it the, is it the facilities? Do they have like a giant Olympic pool or something you can swim in? Is it, or, or, is it programs and, or clubs that they have? I guess what I'm getting at is, I hope that the reason you want to go to Florida is, is more than just you want to go away somewhere and, and you just want to like drop everything and just go and you, and you want to live the, you know, live the life. I mean, it's, that, that is kind of, a lot of people do that, you know, they just decide to drop everything and, and experience the world, but I just want you to consider that, you, you know, I guess what I'm getting at is what was never really communicated to me when I was in high school about college is or at least when I was in when I was in high school it was like go to college and you could be or do whatever you want but I do want you to keep in mind that this is this is going to cost a lot of money that you will have to pay back and and I'm not saying this to scare you at all I just want to make sure that you have an actual reason why you want to go to the school and it's not just I want to pick up and go because first of all picking up and go and going in response to some kind of life problem or crisis or just being like you know what my, my life's a mess I'm just gonna pack a bag and go somewhere I want you to realize that any problem that you have uh, if it's with your parents, if it's with your siblings, if it's friendships, that's going to stick with you. I mean, if you've got some problem, some problem like inside, it's you are, I mean, your insides go with you to Florida. <laughs> You're going to take that problem with you. If, if you want to go to Florida because you've been struggling with depression, for example, you're taking that depression with you to Florida. And I know, you know, I've, I've had my own pick up and go moment that I, picked up and left and I moved to Philadelphia with with no plan with no money and it and it turned out disastrous because all the problems that I had I brought right with me to Philadelphia I'm just saying I hope that you have an actual reason why you really like the school and you and if you have very good reasons and, and if you're explaining these reasons to your parents with enthusiasm then they should be able to get on board are your parents having trouble getting on board because you, you don't you're not really sure of the reason why you want to go to Florida you just kind of think you want to go to Florida I mean just because you change locations it doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to change how you view yourself and the world how you view yourself and the world is going to go right with you to Florida I feel like I'm kind of repeating myself here so I really would just like you to keep that in mind if you love this school and you have reasons why you love this school, then your parents should get behind this. And if they don't get behind it, then that's, I mean, that's just what happens when, you know, you're, if, you're de if you're dependent on your parents to help pay for this thing, then that's kind of the, the price you have to pay. <laughs> it's, you're not 100% in control of, of what ultimately ends up happening because they're the ones footing the bill or helping foot the bill. But I think that if you have real, real, real good reasons why you want to go to this school, it should be a no-brainer. So I hope you consider this, and, and I definitely wish you luck with this issue. That was a really good question that I think is going to end up resonating with a lot of people, so I appreciate that. Hi, Justine. My name's Tara. I'm 17, and I live in the middle of nowhere, Ohio. Earlier this summer, my mom threatened to send me to an inpatient treatment center for an eating disorder. And since that, I've been essentially faking recovery, and it's really given me a lot of weight on my shoulders, a lot of personal guilt, and I just don't know what to deal with, how to deal with it. I want to tell my mom, but I also don't want to be forced into hospitalization. What do you think I should do? Thanks. Mm. Bye. Hey, Tara, this is a great question. Thank you very much for it. Um, I, I do, you know, 
this kind of reminds me of a question that I answered last week last week about um about self injury. <clears throat> Someone had called me and told me that you know they they, they weren't sure if they wanted to stop uh, injuring themselves, and they they weren't sure if they wanted or needed help at all because why why should I get help? What why don't I just do it since I like doing it? And then, you know, if I take care of myself afterwards, I guess they were talking about physically cleaning wounds. I don't know. Tara, first of all, be because I'm not any kind of qualified anything, I am going to say that, of course, I think that you need to talk to a counselor or a counselor or a teacher or an aunt or anybody that that you feel okay talking to. And I, and I, and I feel very honored that you that you felt okay reaching out to me. But I, I am going to say something kind of similar that I said last week, and that is that this situation is not going to improve unless you want it to. So you're, you're faking recovery right now. Why? Is that what you want to do? That, you know, I don't think it is. Do you want to get better or not? Unfortunately, this is something that I'm not sure that counselors really communicate. And I know because I, I've been in and out of counselors, psychiatrists, I mean, my, my whole, since I was a kid, basically. And, I, and I'm not sure if anybody ever communicated to me, you know, th this is going to continue unless you want it to change. You have to make steps for it to change. So, so is what you're saying right now that you want to continue to have an eating disorder? Is that what you want? Or, or do you want to fight to make it better? Because as it is right now, your eating disorder, how you have been eating, how you have been deceptive, how you've been, you know, kind of lying to everyone around you, it's, it's, your, it's your norm right now, right? It's your status quo, it's what you've been doing. So it is going to take some work to change it. It's just like somebody who needs to go on a diet, right? You know, they, the person that needs to lose some weight, they have some habits that they've got to change too. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't mean to uh, harp on you here. I, I, I hate being hard on you. It's just, uh, I hope you realize that nothing about this is going to be very easy. There, there's nothing easy about, you know, say maybe the overweight person that needs to lose weight, change a few things. Just like that person, you have your own issues to confront if, if you want things to change. You're not going to wake up one day cured of your eating disorder. That's going to take some work. It's going to take some, it's going to take challenging some beliefs that you've got in your, you know, ingrained in your head already. It's not going to be the status quo anymore. And, you know, it's, it's up to you if you want to, if, if you want to embrace that. I mean, I can understand why, it, you know, why you might feel bad right now because maybe you haven't been very honest with the people around you. And I know because... You know, there are times when I was self-injuring, when I was a teenager, that I wasn't honest with the people around me either. However, you you got to let go of that. You know, okay, I wasn't honest, but that doesn't mean that that you know, I'm never going to be honest. It doesn't mean that I can't start being honest. You can start being honest if you want and say, Mom, Dad, whoever, you know, I... I, I, I've, I've been saying that I've been doing well, but I haven't. I haven't been doing well. And you know, I, and what ends up happening after that is obviously up to your doctors. But uh, especially since, that's right, you're 17, you're a minor. <laughs> so I guess it is really up to your doctors. But what is up to you is how successful the treatment's going to be. You know, maybe it's kind of up to your parents and, and your doctors and all that stupid stuff with whether or not you are going to be impatient, which I was myself twice, by the way. So I'm being very honest right now. No, I'm sorry, three times, but twice as a minor. And be because, you know, you're a minor, you know, the doctors do what they want. But <laughs> um, so it doesn't necessarily, just because you go to a hospital doesn't mean it like changes your life forever. You know, I'm obviously quite fine, I think. I don't think anybody looks at me and was like, oh, she was in the mental hospital twice when she was 17. They don't, they don't know, you know. So I guess what I'm trying to get at is, is you do need to let go of a little bit of control here, but how successful all of this is, is up to you. Do you want to get better or not? It's up to you. It's up to you. But I, for one, would like to see you get better. 
because there are very healthy ways to manage your weight. I mean, you can eat fruits and vegetables, you can, you know, there, there's healthy ways to keep a healthy weight. And, and I hope that, um, I hope that you can realize that because I don't want to see you starve to death. So I certainly wish, wish you luck with this issue. And I hope that everything works out. Let me know how it works out, okay? I think, uh, I think that's one that's going to help out a bunch of people too. So thank you again for that call. All right, so now I'm going to get into answering some emails. So if any of you guys you would rather email me instead of call me, that's fine. The address is theadviceannex at gmail.com. And please try to remember to include your name, age, and general location so I have, you know, a, a general idea of who I'm talking to and what your situation is. Sometimes it's helpful to know your age and, you know, what state you're in. Hi, JP Metz. My name is Anthony. I'm 18 and I live in Georgia. I came out as gay about three years ago. My grandma was slow to accept it, but finally she has. My mom was okay with it. She has since died. I'm sorry to hear that, Anthony. Um, and everyone else is okay with it, but my dad I've told him twice, and my mom told him twice as well, but he still pushes that I am straight, and that's all there is to it. In public, he tries to get me to talk to girls and talk about things about girls when he knows that, that I am gay. I would confront him about it, but he does have a history of getting verbally and sometimes physically violent when annoyed. <laughs> and gone up against his opinions on things that are major, if that makes sense. I know that I'm 18 and it shouldn't matter, but I come from a culture where family is the most important thing. I just want him to understand and accept me for, for all of who I am. I know how short time can be, for and especially for family. My mom died two days after she turned 36 and my dad is 41. Now everything is awkward between us. I want how we were before I came out close, or I want, or I want how we were before I came out close. <laughs> I need to, uh, eh, all right. I feel like he pushed me away. I don't have anyone I can talk to about this that can relate. Please help. Thanks. Okay, Anthony. Um, I hope, I hope that you understand that the way that you can't always necessarily change how people feel about things. Even if you feel like or you know that it's completely wrong. You can't force people to change their opinions about things. You, I, I know what you mean. You kind of want to like grab his shoulders and shake him so that he gets it, but you can't make people get it. You, you can't. That's, that is up to people. I know that it's your dad and that sucks. You feel like you don't, you know, you don't have your, your dad doesn't have your back. And, but, but I honestly feel like the best way that you can get your dad to come around to this is for you to live your life happily and and what's he gonna do argue with you living a good life being happy with yourself you know you mentioned in in the email that you come from a culture where your relationship with family is the most important thing I know that's how you were raised and and trust me your your relationship with your family is invaluable you you can't you know, it, it is extremely important. However, what I think is more important than that is your relationship with yourself. Are you cool with yourself? Are you doing things that you enjoy? Or are you doing things only to appease other people? Are, are you doing things that you feel like you should do? Or are you doing things that you actually legitimately enjoy, living a life you legitimately enjoy? That, I feel like, is the most important thing, and that will determine your happiness way more than whether or not your dad approves of you. You know, there's a lot of people, not just gay people, there, there's a lot of people that struggle to get their parents' approval. There, there's a lot of people that have parents that just up and left. There they go. And, they're, and then they're totally, they're, they're, they're just uninvolved with their, um, with their lives. And, I mean, do these people need to be upset about themselves and their lives because of it? No. I mean, it, it comes to a point, once you become an adult yourself, you realize that, um, you realize that only you can give yourself the, the approval that you're truly looking for, because you just can't make other people 
think and feel or do things. You just, you can't. And your happiness cannot depend on that. Your, your happiness can't depend on what someone does or doesn't do, even if it's your dad. So I know that that's kind of a, a tough lesson, but the very best thing that you can do for you is to live your life how you, how you want to live it. And let's see, I mean, you're in Georgia. I just don't want you to feel like that the situation that you're in now is forever. The, the situation is, is how it is now until you can get yourself out of it and start living a, a great life that y your dad would or should be proud of. And if he isn't proud of it, then, I mean, what are you going to do? Be upset about it? <laughs> that not, you know, I don't know. So I hope that this wasn't too long-winded for you, Anthony. But, you know, I get a lot of emails like this, and I just hope that you realize that sometimes we got family members that we just cannot appease. And you're better off if you just stop trying and work on yourself. Hey, Justine, how are you? Anyway, I'm going to keep this short and I hope simple. I'm 22, about to be 23 in a few months. There's a guy that I have been in a relationship on and off with since we were both 15. So obviously we've been through a lot together. The point of this email is he says he still loves me and wants to be with me, but, yes, there's a but, he says we're too different and we won't get back together anymore. The last time we were together was from October 2012 to April 2013. He told me he was serious about trying again and even wanted to move in together. Well, the reason we broke up was because he cheated on me once with his ex and I broke up with him the second I found out. It was a long, long time, but I have forgiven him. My question is, should I finally let go of him and move on or should I keep hanging on to the thin shred of... I'm ending this email right now. I'm sorry, what was your... Mari from Hus Hudson County, New Jersey. Mari, it's time to end it. You got... I mean, this is... See, you said it took a long, long time, but you've forgiven him. Good. Because there's no reason to hang on to the hurt here. If you hang on to some kind of hurt or pain or anger or anything like that, even if what the other person did was really messed up, if you hang on to that, you are the only person you're hurting. Honestly, because you are keeping yourself from moving forward. So, uh, I don't mean to like not finish your email here, but yes, it's it's time to let go of this. And I, and I know that that sucks. You know, you want to, um, you see, you have a vision in your head of how you would like it to be. And I know, oh, trust me, I've, I've entertained, you know, all sorts of fantasies with fake fantasies with people <laughs> just, you know, not at all that's actually based in reality. And I don't want you to start like a habit with that. And when things end, if something ends, it's usually for a reason, no, no matter what the reason is. And you know what? Even if you're not sure what the reason is, or if you think it's it's full of baloney, or you think there's something up with him, and and whatever you think it is, the point is, it's that it's ended, it's over, and you don't want to force force it to work again. You don't want to try too hard to. You're you're like trying to put two puzzle pieces together that don't fit. When you're dating someone, you want it to feel good. You want it to feel easy. Like, you know that this is, you know what? This is the right thing. This is right. This is the right guy. We're having fun. This is easy. This is great. Like, that's how meeting someone new and, and dating them should feel. It shouldn't feel like, oh, oh, oh my God, I don't know what's going on with him. I need to try to control it immediately. No, that's, that, that, that ain't how it goes. It, it should be you know, just nothing but nice and easy. I don't want you to have to try to force these puzzle pieces together, Mari. I really don't. And I, and I think a lot of people do that. They try to, they, they see a situation that kind of fell apart and they want to roll up their sleeves and fix it. They're, they're like, no, 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 I, I don't like how this turned out. So I want to change it so that it ends out how I, how I want it to. Sometimes it's time to just let go. And if you've got a vision in your head of like the kind of guy that you want to date, I, I think, you know, as long as you're open to it, it'll happen. Just relax. Don't try to force it with something that didn't work out. And 
I, you waste a lot of time that way. You really do, and I don't want you to get wrapped up in that. I think that, um, all right, before I abruptly ended this email, you said, I hope that he will eventually change his mind and want to try again. Look, I just hope that if you want to do that, I just hope you're not spending time doing that. I hope you don't put your life on hold for him because you never, you don't know what's going to happen and you don't know why he ended it. Heck, he could have just said that just to make you feel better so that he doesn't, so, so that he doesn't seem like a jerk. I've made up all sorts of excuses to not date people just, just so I don't hurt their feelings. So the point is, is that he ended it. It doesn't matter why or what happens five, ten years from now. You need to just move on and find someone that, that is worth spending your time with, okay? Someone that does want to be with you. Mm. Sorry, I kind of feel like I'm talking to myself in the past a little bit, Mari. <laughs> So, yeah, move on and find someone much better who actually does want to be with you, okay? Very good. And I just tapped my hand right by my microphone. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope that that's going to be like a loud bang in the podcast. Sorry, guys, who are listening. And that'll do it for this week's installment of the Advice Annex. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, video along with the audio. This was brand new, so I hope you liked it because I'm, I'm going to keep this format up. I, I like this. This is good. So, if you guys have any questions that you would like to be answered in a future podcast, please call me. The number is 732-529-5772. Or if you're shy, you can email me at theadvicemanics at gmail.com. And please try to remember to include your name, age, and general location so I have a general idea of who I'm talking to, okay? So this is it. This was a this was a fun episode. This was cool. I can't. I, I'm really looking forward to doing it again next week. So please get those questions in, and I will talk to you guys later. See you next week. Bye.